This has to do with the, the Ford Pinto. I'm not sure if you're aware of the recent revelations that have, that have come out about the production of that car. Ford produced it knowing full well that in any rear-end collision, the gas tank would blow up because they had failed to install a $13 plastic block in front of the gas tank. And Ford estimated in an internal memo that that would cost about 200 lives a year. And they estimated further that the cost of each life would be $200,000. They multiplied and they found that the cost of installing those blocks in each of the cars would be more than the cost of saving those 200 lives. And over the past seven years, the car has been produced and over 1,000 lives have been lost. It seems to me that Ford did what would be the right thing according to your policy. And yet that seems to me to be very wrong. Well, let me ask you, let's suppose it would have cost a billion dollars per person. Should Ford have put them in nonetheless? You but see, it you're wasn't really a only, question of you that. You know that you're really only arguing about price. The print, you're not arguing about principle. You're, no, no, no. Because you Principles cannot, nobody can take the principle. Nobody can accept the principle that, the, that an infinite value should be put on an individual life. Because in order to get the money involved, in order to get the resources involved, it's not money. In order to get the resources, they have to come from somewhere. And you want the policy which is maximizes the situation overall. You cannot accept a situation that a million people should starve in order to provide one person with a car that is completely safe. That's absolutely right. Right. Advantages and therefore, you're not arguing anything about principle. You're just, asking, you're just arguing whether Ford used $200,000 was the right number or not. No, I'm not arguing Suppose that it were at all. $200 million. No, 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 no. Suppose it were $200 million. What should Ford have done? $200 million for what? Suppose it would have cost $200 million per life savings. Should Ford still have spent that $200 million? You mean per... That's not the question. That's not really the question. Right? Yes, it is the question. That's not the question. Yes, so That's the principle of the question. That's the only principle involved. I don't know whether Ford did the right, came to the, the right answer or not. That's the, a question of whether these numbers are valid numbers for the relative costs of different things. You're not arguing about a principle if you once agree with me that Mr. if it had been $200 million, the cost per life save had been $200 million. You would not argue. Look, let me go back for a moment. Can I say something in response to that? If Ford had not been able to market those cars in the same kind of economic bracket because of the price of installing this one plastic block, that would be a different question. Maybe Ford could have considered redesigning the whole car so as to make it cheaper. But what we're talking about is balancing advantages and balancing of course, principles. And that's why you're Just a minute. You're only I'm a supporter of, of abortion. Therefore, I don't believe that every single human life is sacred. I believe that principles have to be balanced. And yet, I don't see Ford spending $13 less on each car at the cost of 200 lives a year as being a principled position to take, suppose and yet I think been, your logic requires it. Suppose it had been it. one fewer life a year. So but that the $13 per car, so that that one life, instead of being 200 times, what's 200 times, uh, 200,000, and it's uh, uh, 40 million. Suppose it had been one life a year, so it had cost 40 million. Would it then have been okay for Ford not you to You can't put predict that, that one life is going to be cost because of a physical defect in the car. This was a clear... I know, I know, I know, but this is, you're evading the question of principle. <laughs> no, I'm not. I'm saying that they knew look, before look, they put the car look, out that there look, was a mechanical me. defect. In. You know when you buy a car, you know that your chance of being killed in a Pinto is greater than your chance of being killed in a Mack truck. No, I didn't. I didn't know that the gas tank would rupture. <laughs> of course it is a question. Well, Every one of us separately in this room could, at a cost, reduce his risk of dying tomorrow. You don't have to walk across the street. Of course. The question is, is he willing to pay for it? And the question here he should be raising, if he wants to raise a question of principle, the we, principle he have... should raise is whether Ford wasn't required to attach to this car the statement. We have made this car $13 cheaper, and therefore it is one, whatever the percent is, it is 1% more risky for you to buy it. But why? Now that, then he would be arguing a real question of principle. But why they, should they do that? that? Would, Doesn't that interfere with the free enterprise no, system that you're not touting? At all. Why not? Because the consumer should be free to decide what risk he wants to bear. If you want to pay thirteen dollars extra for that, know. you should be free to do it. But if you don't want to pay thirteen dollars. 
we, excuse me, we have to keep it to the audio over here. So then the government does have the right to require information of corporations, no, no. is that right? No, no, the government has a right to provide courts of law in which corporations that deliberately conceal material that is relevant can be sued for fraud and made to pay very heavy expenses. And that is a desirable part of the market, of course. What I'm trying to say to you is that these things are really a little bit more subtle and sophisticated than you are at first led to believe. There are no, you can't get easy answers along this line because your way of putting it really only doesn't really get at the fundamental principles involved. The real fundamental principle is that people individually should be free to decide how much they're willing to pay for uh, reducing the chances of their death. In Ohio, an old man failed to pay his electric bill. You may be familiar with the case. And the electric company turned off the electricity and he died. The reason they turned it off was because it wouldn't have been profitable for them to keep it on because he didn't pay his bill. Do you believe that was right? I don't know the details of that case at all. But I can well believe, but I'll be glad to, no, no, excuse me. In many of these cases you hear stories which when you find the details are very different from those that are presented. But let's suppose it were true, which is what I was going to go on to say. You know, why do you want to stop me? Why do you assume I'm always going to give the wrong answer? <laughs> let's, assume, let's assume the facts that were true. The result is tragic. Who is responsible? Is it really the responsibility? Should I blame the people? Let's suppose that the, for a moment, let's suppose that the electric company were to follow the practice of never turning off anybody's electricity. Let's just for a moment take that other extreme. Then this wouldn't have happened. Who would pay the cost? Are those would the you, only two be, alternatives? Well, for a moment, we can come to other alternatives, but I just want to show you the logic of the case. Because You're I want to show it to you. Absurdity. No, no, it's not an absurdity, because I want to show you that what you have to ask about are the costs imposed on different individuals. The electric company is meaningless. The electric company is a non human institution. The electric company, the, what you must talk about, are either the stockholders of the electric company, the employees of the electric company, or the customers of the electric company. Those are the people involved. Now, if you go to the other extreme and adopt a policy that the electric company will always will never turn anything off, then you effectively institute a system under which the only people who will pay for electricity will be those who pay for it voluntarily. Now, the number Mr. of people Friedman, who will do that... are those the only two alternatives? No, but I'm just showing you, right. I want to go, you've gone to one extreme, I'm going to the other extreme and show you that where the responsibility really lies for the kind of thing you're describing. The responsibility really lies not on the electric company for turning it off, but on those of this man's neighbors and friends and associates who are not charitable enough to enable him as an individual to meet the electric bill. You're, you're, blaming, you're blaming the wrong person for what happened.